Everyone to another Jags podcast episode 58. It is Jason and myself right now. Joey is en route. Don't get your hopes up. He is going to be here very soon. Uh, but well, I'll be honest, I'm very tired and just don't want to wait um, the five minutes for him to get here to get he started. He says five minutes. He does. We, all, we all know what that means. You're right. That's 10, 15 probably. <laughs> that's a good point. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, before we do, we want to remind everyone that we are on Twitter at another Jags pod. We are on Facebook and Instagram at another Jags podcast. Also on YouTube, another Jags podcast. So reach out to us on any of those social media platforms and we'll make sure to include you in our show because that's what we do here. We answer your questions. We comment on your comments. And uh, as always, we talk about the Jaguars. And uh, I don't think it's any news to any of us that uh, the topic for tonight, the main topic, maybe the entire topic for tonight, depending on how far down the rabbit trail we go is the Jaguars looking like they're going to be signing Nick Foles on Wednesday, March 13th, around 4 p.m. when the official new league year starts. Now, there is legal tampering that starts a couple days before that, so maybe we'll learn more in that time. Right now, it seems like a strong rumor. Jason, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I would put it at like 99% it's going to happen, don't you think? I mean, yeah, I do. I mean, it is a little odd that Dave Caldwell, who is usually rather tight lipped, that this came out so quickly, is, you know, there have been some people now that are backtracking saying, well, we're not sure. I, I, think, I think that's just maybe to cover themselves a little bit you know they don't want to get too ahead of themselves but this this seems by all accounts like it's a done deal i mean when's the last time we were in on a high profile quarterback free agent i mean ever like can you think of a time the jags have ever been in the situation no well one thing that quarterbacks do is their agents like to drum up interests and false interests and try to get as much money as they can so it behooves nick Foles to have this news out earlier than later so if you're in Nick Foles' camp, you're, you know, you're probably doing a lot to get it out there so that other teams seem interested as well. Do you, if that's true, then do you think the numbers are set or is it, are they still in flux? Because let's say that that is what is happening, that Nick Foles' camp is getting word out there to try and drum up some business. What happens if there is none and the Jaguars know that? Can they then drop the price a little bit? I mean, because nothing's been signed yet. I think a lot of people are kind of saying that that's what's going to happen. But I still think he's going to come in around twenty million a year. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think it goes under twenty million at all. I'd say between twenty and even I'd go as high as say twenty two. Yeah, I mean, but like you said, the the only real other player is maybe the Giants, right? You got to think that has the cap room to do that. So yeah, maybe. I mean, the the Redskins. I mean, are they are they so because they're still paying Alex yeah, Smith so much yeah. they just can't afford it? The yeah. Dolphins maybe they they seem like. I think the Redskins are one of those teams that's going to draft a quarterback. I think McShay just came out with his latest one, like today, that had them taking Drew Locke. Wow. So, I mean, it's, I don't know if they're in a position to pay for a quarterback after the Alex Smith thing they did. Right. But still, I, I mean, if you're Nick Foles and the Giants offer you $16 million and the Jags offer you 21 do you take the 21 every time? I mean, yeah, that's a lot of money. Okay. It's five million dollars. I I'm with you. Like at what at what point though does that become? How close do the Giants have to get? Because you're looking at Saquon, you're looking at Odell, you're looking at Evan Ingram. You're you know yeah right. That's a good team. It is a good team. It's um, the division you could argue is an easier division. I mean, is is the NFC East a, an easier division than the AFC South? You got Redskins, Giants, Eagles, Cowboys. The Eagles and the Cowboys are pretty good. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, they're probably a little better. But, you know, it's not to him. He's probably okay with competition. He just wants a team around him. Right. I mean, and Jacksonville is the, we've talked about, the least attractive. It is. I mean. the offensive team. Saquon is, is amazing. Leonard Fournette, when he's there, when he's healthy, when he's in his right mind and wanting to compete, 
I mean, he's no slouch. It's not, you know, he's a, I he's agree a, with you, but it's not how it's perceived nationally. Right. You know, nationally, Saquon's got all the hype and yards and all that. I mean. When you look at it from this, this perspective, Nick Foles has a Super Bowl ring. He has a Super Bowl MVP. So you can check that off your list. A lot of players' mentality is, you know, go make your money now. And, and, and a lot of these pro athletes, they, they don't look at it like we do and say, oh, they got so much. They, they, I think a player like Nick Foles or really any professional athlete that makes it to the top of their prospective sport looks at a locker room and says, I can, I can make a difference there. I can make these guys better. And so maybe that's his mentality. But yeah, I mean, obviously there's more attractive jobs in terms of who would be around him offensively, but maybe that just means that there's no one else that's knocking on the door. And so we got him by default. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a safe move. It still allows us to be competitive this year. We can still draft a quarterback next year. You know, not the end of the world. So you think he's a safe pick? You don't sound, you don't sound over the moon. Yeah, I mean, he's safe. He's safe. Expound he's, on he's that. Safe. Uh, he's safe. He's going to come in and he's going to... He's not going to turn the ball over. Is he Tyrod Taylor safe? He's better than Tyrod Taylor, okay. but he's not a quarterback who I think is going to win you games at the end. And and I liked Nick Foles coming out of college. I I liked him, but um, he just he is what he is. I know I keep saying that, but if if you've watched Nick Foles for long enough, you know what he is. He's he has random good moments, and then besides that, he's 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 decent. N- not going to win oh, you. Oh, Joey's jo- here. Joey's here. Yeah. I, I am here. I'm, glad, yeah. I'm glad I got here now, and so is Nick Foles. I mean, <laughs> I, I've got your back, bro. Um, not going to win you games at the end? I mean, that's basically all he's done in the past two years. I mean, that's what you can rely on. Yeah, he's inconsistent, and I don't expect him to be a starter who's going to be perfect for 95% of the games, 100% of the games. Not going to happen. He's going to have three or four stinkers a year, but he's going to have the rest of the games where he's going to play rock solid, and he is going to be that guy that if you need a two-minute drive to win, he's your man. He's proven that. And he's the locker room presence. I mean, he can walk in as a Super Bowl MVP and dominate. But I agree that he has those credentials. But if you've watched him, how much of that is a product of what he's had around him versus what he's been able to do? Okay, well... Like, like is he going to be able to come in and do that with who Jags have on offense? Well, okay, can't answer that. That's almost impossible. Like if he throws a great throw to to D.D. Westbrook, is D.D. Westbrook going to catch it? Okay, well, let's take this stance then. He comes in last year. Philadelphia was a stinker at that point, right? Yeah, but he didn't get him there. Wentz did. He just came in in the playoffs and won games. He didn't get him there. The Wentz got him there. Barely. Barely. Who cares? <laughs> he got him. I mean, they, they won. How many games did Wentz come in and win? 2017. He won like one playoff game. And then Foles came in in the second round. I'm not talking about the game, like number of games. I the thought Wentz is, got hurt before the playoffs even started. He did. Didn't he? This year he did. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Last, well, last sorry, sorry, sorry. My Super, year, Super Bowl winning Super Bowl year. I'm winning already year. talking about last year. Super as Bowl this winning year. Right, yeah. Yeah. I'm talking about this year. Because, I mean, what did he do this year? He had two, three good games? Yeah, but they were awful when he came in. They were on a downward spiral. Nothing was clicking. Nothing was working. Regardless of who he had around him, nothing was working. He came in, sparked the entire team, and they completely turned around. But he was awful at the beginning of the year. So, I mean, I, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, he is what he is. He's, I agree he's inconsistent. He's, and we're not going to get... He's going to have his ups. He's going to have his downs. He's gonna, but he, overall, he's going to keep you at that midline, decent, above-average quarterback. And you think 20 mil? I don't, I don't want Foles. I think he will be okay, but I don't like Nick Foles, so I'm well, against the move. I said 20 mil, though. Do you think... Yeah, uh, yeah, he think comes in at 20 million. I don't. I think it's going to be way less than that. Way less? Way less. The no. Giants would have value in him at, don't you think, 15 a year? Don't you, don't you think the Giants would be in at 15 a year? The Giants are going to draft before us. I you think know, the reason that it want. came out so quickly that he's coming to Jacksonville because he got a number he liked and knew that no one else was going to be competitive. If, if, it was, if it was low, why would it already be out there that it's a done deal? The Jags have a history of doing that. I mean, they did it with Malik Jackson. They did it with Clayus Campbell. They just come in with these ridiculously high numbers where the free agents have to say yes. That's what you do in free agency. Yeah. You overpay. 
Either way, I'm especially bet- for a quarterback. Either way, though, I'm better with it. I mean, if it's anywhere between fifteen and twenty million dollars, I'm fine with it. Check that box. That's done. We can now focus on everything else that needs to be focused on. I'm tired of the. Is it going to be Kyler Murray? Is it going to be this guy? We're going to trade up. We're going to trade down. It eliminates all that, like having to scheme and guess and gamble and what's going to happen. Is it even possible? Who's going to take what? We know we have our quarterback, good or bad, definitely better than we had last year. That's done with. We can move on. I hope it happens. So on a scale of one to ten, Joey, how how happy are you for this move? If it actually happens and it's twenty million or less, I would say like a seven. Okay. What if it's twenty two million? Six point nine. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just asking. Well, I mean, but that's twenty two million a year is a lot. It's nickels and dimes to these guys though, man. I Dude, mean you have to you only have so much money for your roster. Sure, and we've already got people two million, that's I mean, that's literally Carlos Hyde. That two million right there. So I understand people keep saying like, why do you care? It's not your money. It's not about that. It's about <laughs> we, you only have so much money you can spend for other players. Yeah, you have to be wise with the money. Right. It's, it's not like it's, it's not unlimited. Just, yeah, right. It's not baseball. <laughs> but I mean, you can tweak that as well with a front guarantee versus cap hit long term. Yeah. And, yeah. I and, mean, it's definitely possible. We've got people shopping, you know, Gibson. He's at eight mil. I mean, there's money to be had that can be freed up that wouldn't kill us. Yeah. Look, listen, I like Foles. I just don't like the Foles move for us. And that's I've that's just where I've been like with this whole thing. I just think I would rather go into it with a cheaper quarterback and then bring a free agent in that's a couple of like mid-tier guys that have some longevity to them like a tight end or a linebacker or a safety or a lineman instead of going all or nothing again this year cuz we're a couple injuries away from being right back where we were this year with no cap room, no talent, frustrated team, frustrated fans, because you're just risking it all right now. And that's tough to do for me for a 31-year-old quarterback. So you don't think a consistent Foles... How many years is Foles going to give you? Hey, well, regardless, let's just say one year. Let's talk the next year. You don't think a consistent Foles, our offensive line coming back healthy, Leonard Fournette actually not being a complete 12-year-old, that alone with our defense, you don't think we have playoff deep run possibility? I want to say yes, but and the defense is good, but defense isn't 2017 good anymore. Defense is we're gonna need the offense to carry a little bit more weight this year. It, it, it just we're ah, man after this year. I mean, what do you what do you want me to say after this year? We were so bad this year. We were terrible. We were abysmal. No, we're awful like the world we're adding a quarterback and i understand quarterbacks are the field generals but we're just adding a quarterback so we're going to go from four wins to super bowl run by adding a quarterback maybe but that's not usually how it happens okay, well let's go back to last year last year when basically the same team everybody stays healthy fournette plays well you replace Bortles with Foles. you have the same kind of run do you not yeah we don't have that defense anymore though but Malik Jackson's gone. Tayshawn Gibson's probably gone. We don't have Paul Pleznesny anymore. We don't have Colvin anymore. These guys, the Telvin's that, not playing at that level anymore. I mean, Yannick's, who knows what Yannick is now? I mean, Yeah, but part of the problem with the defense was that they're on the field too much. They got disheartened with the fact they knew their offense was not going to do jack. How hard are you really going to play at that point? I mean, there, there was lots of stuff that contributed to that that was not just who wasn't there or players not being as good as they were anymore. You have a consistent offense, at least with something that can score some points. I think the defense is twice as good. I agree with that for sure. And I think something that, you know, Foles brings to the locker room that you can't argue with is dude is a Super Bowl MVP. You know, he is one. He has a ring that I'm not sure if there's anyone else on the team now, especially now that Malik's going to be gone, uh, that can say that as well. So there's, you know, hopefully he brings some leadership and some stability to the locker room and maybe even some accountability, especially to the offensive side of the ball. But having said all that, I'm trying to be a glass half full on this one, but I agree with Jason. This is, this is not the move I wanted them to make. I think it is a safe move. I wanted them to do what they needed to do to go get Haskins in the draft. And I just feel like they are playing a little scared, you know, and uh, everyone, everyone's looking at these last, you know, a couple runs he made, but you know, Bortles made a run, two seasons ago in December and into the playoffs that got him a contract extension. And we saw how, we saw how that turned out. So are we, are, if, I almost feel like we're repeating history or we, we have the opportunity to by doing this with Foles. I mean, he, 
it just yeah I, I I wanted them to go get their guy go go get their rook and I know everyone's saying the window to win is right now but you know you you have to have a quarterback you have to no matter how good your defense is if you don't have a quarterback really doesn't matter so I, I would have rather them seen them go get go get their quarterback go get Haskins because I think he is a real deal I think he can go out and not just manage games but win games and you know you, you could call that a rebuild I suppose but I don't know. Um, I'm I'm still at the. I'm I'm gonna choose to be optimistic though because it, he's he's the guy that we have. I like Foles. I think he's a he's a high character, high integrity guy. Everything that you read about him, see about him, uh, speaks to that. So I love that about him. I think he's gonna represent the Jaguars in Jacksonville really well. So I'm on board. I just hope that what we've seen from him the last two seasons is what he has become, not a flash in the pan of, you know, what he isn't. And don't get me wrong. I'm kind of playing devil's advocate a little bit. I'm not completely sold on foals either, but I'm good with the move because I don't think there is a great decision in free agency or the draft this year for lots of reasons. I mean, I, I'm not sold on Haskins. I'm not sold on Kyler. There's not a quarterback in the draft that is that guy. So yeah. You can make an argument against every single one of them. And on top of that, we lost or we beat the Dolphins and ruined our draft pick. If we were at five, I'd feel way better about not taking Foles and trying to get one of those. Right, guys. right. So, I mean, it's a matter of where we're at right now more than anything and where the talent's at. Yeah. If it was next year or the year after, it would be a different ballgame altogether. I do. Going back to what you were saying earlier, too, I do agree with, you know, checking it off the box. Okay. We've got our quarterback now. Now, now we can focus on building around him. Versus, I mean, had had they tried to go get, let's just say, you know, you don't you th- like Haskins as much as I do, but there's no guarantee that had they waited, they were going to get him anyway. So that that was going to be a big roll of the dice as well. I get that. So, you know, there, I, I just, I, I'm kind of with Jason. I just don't know. You know, it's like kind of a shrug your shoulder type moving away. Like, okay, well, all right, let's see what happens. But it, it, it's just one. It's just very strange to me. It, it could go either way. You know, it's. I guess what my my thing is. I just am not excited about getting another game manager. And I know he. You know, everyone's saying he's more than that, but I don't see him being more than that. Yeah. I just don't. I don't see him being more than a game manager. I think he's going to be a lot better of that of a game manager than you know Bortles was, obviously. But it's just not. I'm just. I'm ready to have a quarterback thing that can go you know, put us up by a lot of, enough to where we don't have to come back in the fourth quarter. You know what I mean? Like, but that's just who we are. We're getting a top 15 QB that has the potential to flash at times and be in the top 10 to five. I mean, if you look at the past couple of years or his entire record, however you look at it, the dude can throw a spiral at least. <laughs> I mean, he can. Yes, that's true. Knock Bortles, I mean, I love Bortles, but he's consistent with that portion of his game. And I, I'm not sold we're getting him either. I mean... Fake news? It absolutely could be fake news. I mean... Yeah. You know, okay, everybody's, everybody's saying that we're getting him, but until we get him, I won't be convinced on it. We're getting him. I, I, I mean, I'm, it's just a, it's a Tom Coughlin move. It's been in the... Writing's been in the wall forever. I mean, it's... Look, that's He's exactly what Coughlin... Caldwell and Marone wanted Bortles to be this year an accurate game manager and that's what he is the only the only way I'll give them a pass and a seal of approval from me on this move is if they are thinking long term and there's a guy in next year's draft that they really like they think they'll be able to get and they think Foles in this year will improve the team keep the fans happy maybe win a couple games and then he'll be here for a year to train up next year's guy, whether it be Herbert, Lawrence, not Lawrence, Lawrence and Ellsville next year. So Herbert, Tua, uh, from, yeah, any of those guys, then, then, then I kind of get it because you got to spend your money somewhere, but I hope they hit on their first round pick. I think if they draft an offensive lineman, that'll tell you a lot about what they're thinking about the future in the first round. If they draft a tight end or a D lineman, they're definitely thinking about a quarterback next year. I think. Okay, interesting. I, I I don't know. I mean, there's. I'll be honest. You know, maybe this is the 
the eternal optimist in me, just that Jaguar fan that thinks, what if he actually is all of a sudden really good? You know, I mean, there is there is that possibility that who we've seen in the playoffs the last two years, you know, is but is who we've seen in the playoffs has also been throwing to Alshon Jeffrey and Zach Ertz with an offensive line that has like Jason Peters and guys mm-hmm. like that on it. So I'm with you, but I just don't see this offense being comparable to Philly's offense. Right. Well, then that maybe that leads us to the next question. Then who do they go and surround him with? Metcalf, right, man? That guy's jacked. Oh, yeah, my he's gosh. Jacked. Let's do that. That's the hot, the, the hot thing, right? He's big, but... Don't get me Joey started says that, sarcastically. Man. Don't get me yeah. started on that. Please. No, please. I, I want to hear yeah, it. Oh, no. Yeah, go for it. We'll can start with can we read the Twitter question that... Yes. Yeah, about sure. that. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Hold on. All right. This question's from Mike Wilbraham, and he's at Abe for Lincoln. And he says, assume Foles happens, we have to build weapons around him. Any way to justify a tight end or wide receiver at seven? At this point, again, you know, I'm big on the Iowa tight end, but which one? There's two. Hawken, Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Hawken, Bakken, Bakken. Hawkenberg. Yes. No, Hawkinson, yeah. But again, that's just crazy talk, honestly. I don't think we go tight end or wide receiver, and we've got to go O line at that point, in my mind. But. To talk about Metcalf, since that's mentioned, like as he's the stud wide receiver at this point, combine blew it out of the water with a four three, you know, dude, one point six percent body fat, like all that nonsense. Okay, he didn't produce in college. One point six percent body fat is not healthy. Like your your your, your organs. <laughs> you're just here. jealous, dude. dude your organ, yeah, did you see that guy, dude? He's just shredded. Did you see I'm that jealous. guy? Come on. But that doesn't mean you can play football. I mean, at that point, your organs aren't even full. Like you're, you're taking something. To make that happen there's no way possible it's not healthy <laughs> and on top of that he's had ligament injuries and like all kinds of stuff neck, that lead he had to a f- big neck injury yeah, dude, like yeah. all kind uh, hey i didn't not- think he had a neck <laughs> <laughs> hey when it's you- one big muscle yeah. <laughs> when you're swollen your muscles with some stuff dude your ligaments tend to get like injured and look at his three cone drill man yeah i can run straight away this fast but i can't make a turn it's like he's like the pedro serrano of of College wide receiver. Oh, nice reference. I, like I mean, it. yeah. <laughs> Why does nobody pick this guy up? Throw him a curveball. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. I think people's hope is that he turns into like a Julio Jones type guy where he's just big and can jump high. You can throw him jump balls. And I mean, his, his vertical leap was insane. I mean, I'm with you. His eyeball test wasn't great. I mean, he like double caught a bunch of passes at the combine. He didn't look like he was, could really break away from receivers, but. He may not be that type of receiver that needs to break away. He could be like a Julio Jones type that you just can't do anything about it. But, I mean, you make good points. But to answer the question, I don't... I mean, I could definitely see it taking a wide receiver or a tight end. If they really like a wide receiver, I'd rather them take one there than a tight end. Because I think you can get value late in the draft this year at tight end. But, yeah, you got to go O-line for me. I mean, I think Jawan Taylor is your home run pick because he can play right tackle for you for the next eight years right. and we'll have to worry about right tackle we got cam robinson on the left we got uh linder at center and norwell at left guard now we p- plug in a right guard so- from somewhere and we you know if we get lindstrom in the second round which i doubt he'll be there but maybe then you know we're looking good now that's sound football talk because that automatically upgrades every other position around him yes all our wide receivers are better at that point our running backs better at that point our quarterback has more time at that point. I mean, you got to do that, right? Yeah, I mean, it, to me, that's that's where they should go. It, offensive line, offensive line, and which, you know, maybe they, we talked about it. I don't know if it was last episode or the one before that, but Jesse James is a tight end, uh, free agent. Maybe get him from Pittsburgh, and that allows you to draft an offensive lineman uh, seventh overall. I, I'll go back to saying tight end seventh overall is just way too high, way too much value in that. For, uh, to draft a tight end and in the, in the, with a seventh pick, I just I just can't justify that. Let me let me go back really quick to the Metcalf thing as well. The only number that you need to know about Metcalf is the number eighteen. That is the amount of catches he had last year, the entire season. Yeah, he was injured. Doesn't matter. <laughs> was it eighteen? A, was it a ligament injury by chance? No, he had yeah. a neck. He had a serious neck injury. That was right. last year. Yeah, so, and that was so that was after all the. Yeah, he had a injury, serious right? neck injury last year. And that's why people were like, that's kind of his biggest knock right now against him. His injury? Yeah. Yeah, then pass. <laughs> I mean, seriously, pass. Yeah, but I mean, he's, but all everything else, 
I'm just saying. I mean, he's, someone's going to reach for him. Of course. Yes. O- Oakland, of course. Oakland Raiders. That's like, like a classic Oakland move. No, I, 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 not at all. To put it in context, DeAndre Hopkins, who I consider to be the best receiver in the NFL, ran a four five seven forty. No argument. He is the best. Yeah. So I mean, everyone wants to get so wrapped up in the combine, and it's just to me, it it boggles my mind. I, I'll. I'll I'll say this. I don't know if we have any Twitter questions directly about the combine, but I'm going to say this. We do. I hate the combine. <laughs> Can I just say that? I agree. Yeah, it's such a waste of time. It's it's um, it, What I marvel at with the combine is not the players. It's the fact that the NFL is able to spin this event into in the media storm that it has become and how fans have gotten so consumed with it. Listen, I didn't watch any of it. Had I the NFL network, I probably would have, but I was all over Twitter about it. And, and, but... Reading it, going, this is a waste of time. This, but I, I kept engaging in it. So it just, it just, uh, the, the NFL is just, it, they're just geniuses over there that they can market this the way that they do. When really, what it boils down to, it, it does hardly anything for most teams. I would say. I agree, and let's go ahead and throw and like attach to that mock drafts because I'm about as fed up with those as I am. I love mock drafts. I can't. I can't. No, can't dude, mock drafts too. Yeah. Dude, it's the the whole NFL package. They could sell ice to an Eskimo at this point. Like, hey, Jakai Polite, he's going to be a top eight pick at this point. Oh, combine stats. The guy can't interview. He's slow. He can't jump. Dude, he wasn't a top 10 draft pick to begin with, but they hyped him. And now, I mean, I, I don't like any of it, honestly. Can I jump in here? Because I'm just, yeah, please do. I'm getting heated over here. All right, look, you got to you got to understand what the combine is. It's not it's not an open tryout where teams are making a decision on how they do this one week. It's they've done their research, they've done their homework, they've noticed a couple things they want to kind of check out before they draft them. So they put them through these individual drills, these position drills, and they watch these specific things. So they've shown on film that they get off the ball slow. It's a D lineman. Or they've shown in game film that they've, you know, the DB can't flip his hips and get open and turn and run. When they put them through these individual drills, they can look for these specific things and they can see, is this a product of his poor coaching at the level he was at? Or is this a fundamental issue we're going to have to re-coach? And they value those things differently. And yeah, is a 40-yard dash important for an offensive lineman? No. Is a bench press important for a DB? No. But there are other things that are. And they don't put them... there. These drills are specifically chosen for a reason. And you can get a lot out of what these drills show you by watching these guys instead of having to go to their practice and see how they do at practice, which they... Probably have film of that too, to be honest. But it's it's not a tryout. It's just a let me verify what's been on film kind of thing. Well, on that note, Metcalf's hips were way too wide to come out of routes. Metcalf did not run good routes, but he may not be a guy that has to because of his size and strength. I mean, the NFL is turning into a jump ball league. I mean, if you get a guy that can get up in the air in the back of the end zone, you can be a fantasy amazing player. But you, if the Jags were at fourteen instead of seven, would you want him? If he's available? It depends on, <laughs> gosh, uh, no, not 14. I like him, but he, I like him, but he's going to be a good number two somewhere. He's going to be a good number two. If we're picking at the end of the first round, I wouldn't yeah. have a problem with him as a Yeah, player. I agree. Or if, what, if, what if he's there What if he's there at the second? He won't sure. be. Sure, he won't be, though. Not, not with all that's going on. I mean, but I think there's receivers that are better than him that will be there. Yeah. Like the dude yeah. from Ohio State, I think he might be there. They have two good receivers, but... What's that dude's name? Hold, please. Paris Campbell. He's uh, he had the, he had the tie for the fastest 40-yard dash time. I know that means nothing to you guys because you hate measurables. Well, I mean, I'm with you, but I mean, I yeah, think... Well, okay, I'm, I'm going to have to cut you off there because I don't hate measurables as long as they back up the film. What they, their actual, what they did. You've got one, two, three, maybe four years of actual football experience on tape that you can watch these guys. Their measurables should not outweigh that. Yeah, but you're you're the biggest person of like, look where they played, look where they went to school, look what conference they played in. Some of that is true. So let's see how they play against all of the other best players that are going to get drafted. Let's put them in an individual drill against a defensive end that's going to get drafted rather than some scout team guy from Northern Iowa, you know? So, I mean, there is something to be said about getting a reading that's not in a big 
10 game or a big 12 game or an sec offensive you know whatever it is right it kind of gives you a a different perspective of the guy yeah i guess if you look at it all i would i would agree with that but that's not what happens but to go back to what jason has been saying about a certain kyler murray if you can play you can play if you can play you can play and where's my boy about to get drafted Uno. My boy's about to get drafted <laughs> number one overall. After all that hate, after all that hate, he's going number one. And all good right. for him, man. And good for Kingsbury. I mean, getting his boy. That's I mean, pretty insane to get drafted. And it hasn't happened yet, but assuming you're right, get drafted number one overall in the NFL and number nine overall in baseball. He's a freak like, athlete. That is, he's that a freak is an athlete. athlete. You watch him play and he's a freak athlete. But he couldn't come in here and tell you like which pitcher on the wall was white versus green apparently so in the interview process yeah they i they talked on the radio today that ej Manuel was the greatest interview of all time he was the best interviewer he blew people away with his knowledge of the game his his professionalism his maturity and he was dog poo better than peyton manning he dog was, he was amazing better at throwing peyton the manning. ball into the ground on screens <laughs> yeah, they, they they said they they had said scouts were they're the best interviewer he's ever they've ever talked to well again i mean you can't wait i guess the whole like moral of this story is you can't wait everything on an one, interview one of the components it can't be right. just the interview it can't be just the combine it can't be just how you did in college and where you played so it's all of it Good for Kyler Murray, man. I, I hope he does well. He's a ball Honestly. player. He will, he will be, he'll hope, be fine. I hope he does. I'm I do. He Let me ask be. you guys this, since we're talking about Kyler Murray, if the, if the Cardinals, who are sitting at number one, do indeed draft him, Josh Rosen, what would you be willing as a Jags fan to trade for Josh Rosen? It's funny, when we first started talking, everyone was like, you would have to give this year's first. And everyone was like, no, we can't do that. And then it was like, okay, what about next year's second? And you're like, oh... That kind of sounds good. Now they're talking a third. Now his value is about a third round pick this year. Which we have two of those. I'd be really good with that. But he's not good. Eh, he's not oh, good. I don't know. He was statistically know. the worst quarterback in the league last year. Arizona was a dumpster. They had fire. David Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald, and Christian Kirk. No. Old man Larry Fitzgerald. And Old man. He's better than any receiver the Jaguars have. I love Larry Fitzgerald, but come on, dude. You wouldn't take him on the Jaguars? He's like the second greatest free agent. He's not a real free agent. Actually, I would absolutely. Of course, let me, you let, would. Me ask of course you this, let me ask you this though: If Larry Fitzgerald was on the Jaguars last year, how much better would have Blake Bortles been with him on the team? Not much. I think a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. Like, would there's, there's some would, things that Larry Fitzgerald can't overcome, and, and I'm not talking about the quarterback. I'm talking about the offensive line. The lack. I mean, David Johnson was on the team, but he did not have an amazing season. I think most of that was play calling. It was a bad environment. It was toxic. Um, for a third-round pick, I would absolutely take Josh Rosen in a heartbeat. Yeah, I mean, you give him a shot. What do you lose if he doesn't work out? Josh Rosen. I don't want him as our, as our only option. Okay, let me rephrase this. I don't want him as our only option. This is our plan You mean in B. terms of backup? Yeah, backup, great, yeah. So absolutely. if they, I'm saying if they sign Nick Foles, you wouldn't trade a third-round pick yes, for Josh I, Rosen? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, right. okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's too. stupid. Why? Who's, who else is going to be the backup? Be- anybody that you, that you can, can, can trust to come in and be decent or to teach – or to do something, or run a scout. I mean, you got to. The guy it was terrible. I don't think. I don't think he's gonna. A, if if he's gonna, he's gonna need playing time to develop. He's not gonna get any playing time. And I, this is all I'm gonna say. This is all I'm gonna say about Josh Rosen. Okay. Do you know who had better stats than Josh Rosen? Ah, here we go. Like everybody, Blake, Blake Bortles? Bortles was a much better quarterback than Josh Rosen was last year. I get it. He was a number one player coming out of high school. I get it. People love him. At some point, though, you got to call a spade a spade. That dude was terrible last year. He was terrible last year. Yes, but he he was terrible in his rookie year. Bortles was in his fifth year. So the the comparison's a little off. I I think I just don't think you can write a book on a guy yet after one year. And I mean, look, the coach got fired in his first year because that's how much belief they had in what he was doing there. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, so you're every, looking at the coach and the quarterback, both one and done, or down there in Arizona. Yeah, possibly if they want. I mean, if they're drafting Murray, then they why keep him? I'm I mean, not there's saying, no point for them to keep him. So no, I'm not saying that he's like the answer. I'm saying that he's worth a third round pick. I would rather draft happens. someone in the third round that I think would help us by running back, a D lineman, O lineman, than have a quarterback that I know is bad. Here, here's my thing. I here's here's I would like it because. We need a backup anyway. So why not get a guy that could possibly be actually pretty good? And if he's not, he's a backup quarterback, you know, which, you know, I, 
you need in this league. It's not going to be Kessler. He's not going to be back. So why not get him with the potential that, hey, who knows? Maybe this guy could turn out to be something. He was drafted, you know, in the first round of round quarterback just a year ago. If not, then he's our backup quarterback. He's young and he's going to be relatively inexpensive. I mean, his, his contract, how it was drawn out, most of it got paid his rookie year. So I, I say take a flyer on him. Why not? And the fact that we have two third round picks anyway. So, I mean, again, I'd love for us still to get Greer in the third round because, I mean, he's dropped off the radar of everybody at this point. So maybe he falls that far. But if we got Rose, I would not be mad with that. I mean, I'll say how you could be. There's a lot of potential still there, and as a backup you quarterback, you can get. You're not taking a seventh round pick as somebody that yeah, but take a flyer on him. I mean, you don't take a flyer in the third round, man. You get value in the third round. Like a third rounder is going to be a starter. A first round pick for a third round. Price. A first round pick that was a first round pick last year, but now he's a third round pick, and he's probably not going to play. He's not going to play unless Foles gets hurt. Might be the best thing for him. I know. I know you. You have to get on the field, but maybe well, take why a not get off? a starting right guard? Why not get a slot receiver? Why not get a we got Will safety? <laughs> Why not get a guy that's going to play in the third? That's you because you still you, need a backup quarterback. Yeah, but you don't you build do a that. team with a with a bunch of flyers in the third round. You build a good team with starters in the third round, and you can't be throwing away third round picks. You'd rather have a guy who's never taken a snap in the NFL at whatever round as our backup than somebody who was a first round pick that we're getting for an extra third round pick that has had NFL experience and has potential. I would rather take a projected starter than a projected backup any day of the week. You're not getting a projected starter as a backup quarterback. That's exactly my point. I would rather take a projected starter in the third okay, round I see, I see than saying. a projected backup quarterback. Okay, I see what you're saying. Because then what? I mean, what's going to happen? I mean, Foles is going to play for a year or two, and you're going to draft a new guy, and you're never going to hear from Rosen again. Or look at all the value we've gotten in the third round. Or Foles develops... Sorry, or Rosen develops under Foles, kind of like a, I don't know, Aaron Rodgers under Brett Favre. Favre. I mean, I don't know, man. That's the old school style of thinking. Hey, give these guys a year or two to actually learn how to play the NFL game and see what they do. I mean, there's an argument for each side of it. There's no, there's just, there's no perfect answer, man. But I get your point. I, a starter at the third round. What are the options there? Uh, like as far as this year. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it depends on who's available, but I would assume you could get value at tight end. Who's the guy everybody loves from LSU, uh, like Faro or Fondo or whatever his name is. I don't. What's his name. He's got a funny name. Yeah, I mean, you probably might be get him in the third round. You might be able to get, you know, a, a, who knows if Lindstrom falls to the third round. I mean, you can get a safety that's going to start instead of Tayshawn Gibson. It is, it is tight end heavy. I mean, there's lots of potential there. Do you think? We could just to make me feel really good to get Greer in the third round. Yeah, I mean, he could be there. I mean, I don't think he's worth. I mean, you don't think we should take him in the third round? No, I don't think Greer's good. Gosh, I, I mean, I, I, it is. I mean, I don't think he's good. I'm sorry. I mean, he was good in college, but if we used one of our two third round picks on Greer. You you would not be happy with that. If we had Foles and then we took him, yeah. I'm not saying as a starter. You know, I would feel better about that, honestly, than I would Josh Rosen. Okay. But I still would rather have a guy that is going to play. Because I, the quarterbacks are so deep next year and the year after. Why are we wasting a, a round? Why are we messing around with the quarterback this year? If you believe in Haskins or Murray and you want to trade up and go get him, I'm all for that. I'm with that. But if you're going to take a guy at seven, don't take a quarterback. Not this year. And I agree. I don't think we should give up any picks for next year in case whatever quarterback we do go with doesn't work out. Because next year's draft is way heavier on quarterbacks that are good. I've never been a fan of taking flyers on quarterbacks. That just that's what got us in this mess in the first it, place. It just never. I mean, it ran. It, it it seldomly works out taking a flyer on a quarterback. Every year teams do it. Every year we want to, and very rarely does it work out. So like the Tom Brady syndrome? Rarely. Russell Wilson, rarely. These guys, I mean, you look through the quarterbacks that are starting now. I mean, they're all first-round picks. Are there any Twitter questions on, like, what are the top five needs we feel that I don't know. I was have? getting all emotional. I haven't looked at Twitter in a while. Let me... Well, I'm just saying, because I think that's, like, a good place to start with all this, is, like, what are the five, like, best positions or, like, most needed positions we need to fill above all else? 
Nope. I mean, the question about justifying a tight end wide receiver we already answered. We have some questions about free agency. Do we want to move on to free agency? I guess sure. that kind of fits. Yeah, why okay. Not? So All right. Throw that in there. Um, this question is from Jason Rat. He's at Rat HCP. He says, with Tayshawn Gibson being potentially traded or released, and so many good safeties available, do you guys think the Jags pursue one of them in free agency? Eric Weddle. Go get him. They need it. He's probably going to be the highest paid free agent safety, though. He's Just, the oldest. He's 34. Yeah, but he was a pro bowler like a year ago. I mean, he's, he's played well. Yeah. I, I would just love him because he is he is the Paul Puzlesny that we need. I don't think we can afford him. I don't think he's going to be as expensive as you think. Maybe less than eight, right? You he'll, think he's going to get more than Earl Thomas? I think he'll get more than what we're saving with Tayshawn Gibson. Really? Yeah. At least for a year. He'll get a one year. He'll get a one year eight million dollar deal. Maybe one year seven million. That's what we're saving with Gibson. Are, are we? At, are we? I mean, is it a yeah, foregone I mean, conclusion I, that Gibson's gone? Apparently, they were shopping him for a trade. Actually, it was the other way around. Apparently, we were having teams contact us for him. Right. So that doesn't mean anything. He could. It doesn't, but it means that if we need to cut some cap space and can't otherwise, we do. We've got the option there. We do need to cut cap space. And they did say something at, like as part of that conversation of. So on top of that, he's also played every single game since he's been here. So he's been well above average from a, like a quality standpoint, but he's also been extremely healthy. I don't know. Something to be said for that. But Blake's been healthy too. <laughs> but he hasn't played extremely above average. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, Gibbs has been he's very gone. consistent. He's just man. too expensive. He's just I, too I expensive. I agree. I think he is too. But w- don't we have a rookie that came in and played really? Was it not Harrison. Mean, Harrison. Harrison, yeah. yeah. Harrison and uh, we re-signed. Wilson. Gerard Wilson. Yeah. Here's what and here's what's happening, and this happens in the NFL if you watch long enough. Certain positions get very devalued in like random off seasons, and then people scramble to fill them during the season. So what's happened is is this safety position has become very devalued. I mean, you got to think back to the days when safeties were going top five, things like that. They're not doing. They're not. It's not happening anymore. And so everyone's like, you know what? I can get away with a cheaper, younger option at safety as long as everyone else around him is a veteran and can kind of carry him. But what's going to happen, and this is what always happens, is someone gets hurt, and now you're bringing in a guy back basically off the street to play that position, and then everyone scrambles, and then you see all these guys getting signed in the first couple weeks of the season. So I think that's what's going to happen at the safety position, and I think that might be what we do. I think we might roll into the season with Jared Wilson, and because he's shown us that he can at least play, and hopefully he does, and hopefully he stays healthy. But if he gets hurt and we roll in his backup, we go into panic mode, and then we go for one of these guys. That's what I think. I mean, that's not the riskiest risk out there, right? I mean, when you got RDBs and you got everything else that goes with our defense, I mean. I mean, there's only so many coverage schemes as a safety that you have to learn. It's not like coming into a new system is going to totally throw you off as a safety. It's not like playing quarterback or receiver or running back or offensive line. It's. It's cover two, it's cover one, it's cover four, it's cover it cover zero. I mean, it's not it's not complicated. I think that secondary would benefit greatly from Eric Weddle being back there. A veteran leader. I mean, we saw Ronnie Harrison last year, you know, that unsportsmanlike penalty he got. I don't remember what game it was. We all remember. Just infuriating penalty. For him to have a, a guy back there to, to train him up, you know, and how to be a professional, how to play, would be huge. And I, I, I just don't think he's he's gonna cost as much, especially because there are so many safeties in free agency right now. I think that's gonna bring the cost of some of these guys down, just because the demand isn't gonna be so high. So, if they can afford Weddle, and I think for him, it's it's an attractive job as well. It's a good defense. You got stud corners uh, that's gonna make your job easier. It's it's uh, sunny Florida in in the latter stages of his career, so I I would love to see them go try and get him. It would be a it would be you know Joey's been saying for a long time we miss that pause presence in the locker room and on the field. That's how you fill that void right there. And I do think that that's been very understated the impact that pause leaving had. I mean that had a lot to do with things, but I mean again I mean. Is safety really our concern? 
He's averaged over seven million dollars a year for since two thousand twelve. Well, seven million dollars in Florida is like five million because no state income tax. So come on for five million. We cut three million. We got a veteran leader. Done. I don't think we're gonna spend that on a safety. That's a lot of money, man. We don't have money. If we sign Foles, now if we roll into it with a cheap backup, I'm with you. But if we sign Foles, man, we don't have $5 million to pay a safety. We just and don't. I'm not saying that we should. Again, I don't think that's one of our hot spots. And that kind of goes back to it. I mean, I, th- I think that, you know, obviously, quarterback, hot spot. Tight end, hot spot. Middle linebacker, true middle linebacker, hot spot. Offensive line, Probably fourth hot spot. I mean, what? You don't think so? You'd rather have a, you'd rather have a tight end than an offensive lineman. Absolutely. We have a lot of guys coming back healthy, and we're going to draft somebody in the draft. Who's going to play on the right side? I'm saying free agency. I don't know, but we could pick up somebody in free agency I'm t- or in the draft on the offensive line. I'd rather draft a safety than an offensive lineman. Okay, but I don't. I think it's okay going into it. Like you said, gambling with what we got at safety. Yeah. I don't think we can gamble at what we got at tight end or middle linebacker or those other spots. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. That's why I'm asking, like, what are the hot spots? I mean, to me, I know, I know what you're saying, but no one, you don't feel like you need a safety until you need a safety, you know? So we're saying how Gibson had a great year and all of a sudden he's gone. I mean, if he played above average, you know, what's it going to look like if, Someone doesn't, you know, we, we've had less than stellar safety play before and it wasn't pretty. So you didn't enjoy Chris Prozinski playing safety for the I Jags. Mean, we all had fun with it. Sure. <laughs> but I don't want to necessarily repeat that. But I mean, I guess what you have to do is weigh if you're going to spend the money, like where, what, what value are you going to get? Forget about the position, but where are the players at? You know, we might need a wide receiver, but we've gone over those names before. So are you just going to spend that money just because that's where the, the, the supposed need is more? Or are you going to actually go spend the money on a guy who's good? It's like, you know, that, that's really, I guess, where you have to start. But, and again, a lot of this goes back to what is the Foles deal going to be? Is it going to be in the, in the 20 million range or is it going to be less than that? Because then that can change some things with how much money we're, we're spending. This question from King at the Noah Bennett kind of goes about free agency as well. He says, are there any viable options at linebacker? in free agency and i figured none of you guys would know so let me read off some names and let me tell you whoa whoa R- really just assume all right i don't know <laughs> <laughs> let me read you off some of the big names and I'm, this is this is inside backer i'll throw in a couple outside linebackers and i'll tell you if they are if they're like maybe viable okay mark Barron from the la rams i think he's going to get picked up by the rams and or he's going to demand a lot of money but a big name that's good out there K.J. Wright is an outside linebacker from the Seahawks who was cut. He's going to be on the open market. He may not demand a lot of money, but he is going to have to play outside. He's a true outside linebacker, coverage linebacker, small guy, kind of like the rest of them back there that we have now. Put him in our collection. It would be a fast collection, no doubt about it. Preston Brown, inside linebacker from the Bengals. Good inside linebacker. Maybe in our range of affordability. Manti Teo, inside linebacker from the Saints. Can probably afford him. Might fit. C.J. Mosley from the Rams. Might call for more money than we can afford, but a, definitely a really good inside linebacker. Josh Bynes actually is kind of a sleeper pick from the uh, Cardinals. Another guy on a bad team. Pretty good inside linebacker. I, want, for one, wouldn't mind having him. Looking at some other names, I'll just say him. Denzel Perriman, Ray Ray Armstrong. Leroy Reynolds from the Eagles. Not a bad list of names. I'm seeing if I've missing any big names here. Quan Alexander, a lot of people like him. DJ Alexander, you can get somebody. Any of those names do anything for y'all? <laughs> I mean, no, not at yeah, all. Yeah, no, I was gonna that, say that's not, not really. that's yeah, that that's the Jaguars' office's what? job. CJ Mosley. I mean, there's, yeah, there's lots of names I recognize, and yeah, they're no, he's they're, good though. I, 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 I'm not saying there. There's some of them are big name dudes. Anti tail. I agree, big name guys. They make a lot of plays. They've played well, but I mean, I just want somebody in there that's going to be a have that veteran leadership and play the position well, so we can stick our other two guys on the outside. I mean, that's the bottom line. I'm not going to make the call of who that is. I'm just 
that's good to know there are guys out there that we could do in free agency if we needed to. I mean, that's a spot I think we need to adjust at. Yeah, I'm with Joey. I, I'm going to trust the team on that one. This is hilarious, though, since we're talking about like what's out there in free agency. <clears throat> out of the top six tight end positions, I'm just looking at one ranking here. Can you guess who the number two and the number six tight end and free agency are? Number two, Austin Safarian Jenkins. Number six, Miles Paul. Number two, Austin Safarian Jenkins. And number six, James O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known, yeah. So maybe tight end is not the best free agency position. I mean, the, the reason I looked that up is because everybody's talking about Jared Cook, which I, I have not watched anything on him. But apparently he's like all the rage as far as... Let me tell you about I'm, Jared Cook. All right. Jared Cook is a decent player. He's kind of getting old. He had a really good year last year. The year before that, he was injured the entire year. The year before that, he was pretty decent. He's bounced around to a couple. I think he played with like the Raiders last year, I think. Yeah, it was Raiders for sure. Yeah, and uh, he, he's, he's good, but risky, and I'm not a Jared Cook guy. He was with the Rams before that, right? Um, doesn't say on this yeah, list. Yeah, I think he was. But I mean, I, I guess my point on that is tight end's got to be in the draft. If, if that's your list, if our guy we're giving up, is number two on the list. I mean, yeah, you got you got Jesse James, like James you mentioned, but it just doesn't seem like there's a lot there. I mean, there's there's not. And as I watched the combine, the combine changed my opinion on the tight ends, and I am off the Hawkinson train, and I am now on the Noah Font train. So I want him. If we can get him in the second, that's what I'm saying. You can get value in the second round if you can get a wider. I would rather get a lineman in the first round and then Noah Font in the second round, then get Hawkinson in the first round and then whoever's there in the second round at offensive line. Do you think he'll still be there in the second round? I think he will. Or Irv Smith. I he he was okay. He was okay. But Font I think is gonna be the best tight end in this in this in this draft. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but and that's why I don't think he'll be there when the Jacks pick in the second round. Like tight ends aren't, don't go. I mean, we looked at the list last week. Tight ends aren't drafted early. No, they're not. I mean, Goddard, who we loved, was drafted much later than that. So maybe you're right, actually. Now I think about it, you're probably right. They can definitely be available. I'd be all about that. I would love that pick. We're averaging less than, we average less than one tight end drafted in the first round over the last 10 years. So over the last 10 years, it's not guaranteed that a tight end even goes in the first round. It's because it's not a high value position. It's not. Like we talked the about, round. there's like three good ones and the rest are just like meh. All right, Caldwell, we're doing your job for you here. Fun, yeah. tight end, fix, check that box. Yeah. I mean, he's the other guy. He's the other Buckeye, right? Or Hawkeye. No, sorry, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. So, Come on. Yeah. Hey, get but, your eyes right. It's the Midwest, man. Who watches them anyway? <laughs> Nobody. Every time I see him, I think the Steelers are on. <laughs> <laughs> what are they playing on a Saturday for? Any more questions? Yep. This next question, this is... How many questions do we have There's tonight? two more. Okay. This question is about running back. This is from Manny, and he's at Manny Simi Day. Sure. And he says, what do you see us doing with the running back this offseason? Do you see us adding a free agent, drafting one, or both? And who do you like and who would fit? I'm dropping, like, big names here with the Weddle thing, and I get all that, but Maurice Jones-Drew was on 1010, I think it was yesterday. Yeah. I said maybe that one of the smartest things I've heard this so far this offseason regarding the Jaguars he basically said, the Jaguars need to go get Frank Gore. And oh, I, I thought, my. I love That's your boy, MJD, saying that. Uh, and I love boy. it. And here's what his point, and I agreed with it 150%. He said, look, maybe he gives you 10 to 20 snaps a game, 15 snaps a game. The point is, you're bringing in a guy who is going to be able to mentor the guy that you drafted fourth overall two seasons ago, Leonard Fournette, who's supposed to be, even with Foles here, the center of the offense. And he talked about how when he was drafted by the Jaguars, Maurice Jones Drew, that is, he followed, he was basically Fred Taylor's shadow in every aspect of everything, how to eat, how to stretch, how to get a massage, all of it. Leonard Fournette doesn't have that and clearly needs it. So to bring in someone like Frank Gore, I mean, what is Leonard Fournette going to say to Frank Gore? I mean, Frank Gore is going to be, or should be in the Hall of Fame, I would think. What are you paying a running backs coach for then? Like, why have a running no, back? No, you, you, you need a player. You need, you need someone, you need someone that, I mean, I think all that, that stuff is overrated, man. Well, 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 I mean, well, Maurice Jean-Jean said it himself. When you have 
a stud player like Leonard Fournette, you need a player because he's not listening to anybody else. He's not listening to his coaches. He's not listening to Fred Taylor, who's not playing anymore. I, I, I'm not, I would not be mad at that. I think he needs a guy in there that isn't going to put up with this crap that is doing it every day and has done it. And like you said, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. I just don't. Maybe think, that'll break through that thick skull. I don't think a guy like Leonard Fournette is going to be like, oh, now that Frank Gore's here, I'm going to change. I, I, I mean, I just I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I think if that was going to happen, it would have happened after his suspension. It would have happened after he he's gotten in trouble. It would have happened after his injuries. A veteran old guy that comes in that can't run half the speed of him isn't going to come in and say, Frank Gore produces. That guy's a freak. Do you want Frank Gore playing 15 snaps a game? I don't. I mean, it depends on what the snaps are. It doesn't have to be handing him the ball. He could be blocking. I would have loved to have him 15 snaps a game last season. Yeah. In a heartbeat. This this season. Yeah, I this, mean, we'll I, say I see the point. Season. I see I see the point. Uh, they brought in Rawls. They have Fournette. I don't see them bringing in another free agent at the running back position. I see them maybe drafting a guy or signing, an, honestly, an undrafted rookie. I mean, they brought in Rawls, but, I mean, that dude could very easily be, you know, not making the 53-man. I mean, it's not like he's guaranteed to be on the team when the season starts. Is Hyde officially gone at this point? Not officially. They said they were shopping him, but he's going to be gone. They saved $2 million from a guy that's... Pretty trash. He's he's gonna get cut. I mean, they couldn't. They would they trade for him a fifth rounder. Yeah. What are they gonna get back for him? I mean, come on. We basic economics. If you get him for a fifth and he doesn't show you anything, you're not gonna get anything better than a fifth. No one's gonna trade a seventh because you can just get a seventh round rookie. But I think the Jags roll into it with Fournette, Rawls, and an undrafted rookie. And Grant. No, he think he's gone. What? Yep. That's crazy talk. You got no. That's crazy talk. Grant, How, wait, wait, that's a crazy talk. What if, if Grant comes back and actually... What was the first word you said? Hmm? What was the first word of that sentence you said? If he comes back, if, obviously. If. Okay, if he's You healthy. don't put if on a guy you're paying $3 million, $2.5 um, Easily you could renegotiate that contract. And that guy would do it to stay where he's at because he just had a whatever, Lynn Frank, whatever it's called. I mean, that's a major injury. If he comes back from me, he looks good. You could easily have that guy back on your team. Why would you not try? Because you could get a guy that's probably better for 600K. I think Grant's back if he's healthy, but I agree 100% that we're rolling into the season with what we have and a late round flyer on a running back that nobody's ever heard of. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world. There's not a, this is not a stud heavy running back class. I, I mean, wouldn't be surprised if they don't go super late round. I could see if they. Uh, they have two third rounds. If they get one in the third round, that maybe could compete with Fournette. Everyone likes that you know, guy. Put a little FA- pressure on him. That guy at FAU, everyone likes uh, Devin Singletary. Yeah. Seems to be the hot name right now. He's a good player. He's got good film. He's, I mean, he's a good player. I don't know, man. That I mean, Lane Kiffin dominated that. What is that conference? The Are you going to get me on conferences now? Yeah. What is that? Dang it. That's uh, the Atlantic. I think it's the Lane Kiffin conference, right? <laughs> Is it Atlantic? Conf- Atlantic? Atlantic, Atlantic Coast, Florida Atlantic, <laughs> something know. like I, that. Anyway, yeah, n- not not a great one. No, I mean they're they're good at women's volleyball. Their championship game was against like what Memphis, I think. The AAC, the AAC, AAC, right, right. It was very close. Yeah. Anything else on running back? No, we're getting close to our limit here on time. We, we are. Last question. Make it quick. It's from Patrick Jackson. Wow, oh, Patty. And the. Patrick Jackson. He's we at, add the the to him. He's at radius underscore Johansson. He says, AB or not AB? That is the question. And that's a great question to end with. I mean, James, you can take it away with like what we've seen, I think. And then. Yeah, I mean, his agent, I think it's Drew Rosenhaus. They're coming to Jacksonville to talk about his current contract. So I don't know why they're, but that was reported today by Adam Schefter that they're going to be in Jacksonville doing business together. Didn't relate that necessarily to the Jaguars, but just that they're going to be here. So it's kind of a head scratcher. Isn't Schefter kind of like the TMZ of like football at this point? As far as he knows like everything, breaking news. Yeah, he's more reliable than like a Jason. Yeah, he's not. A, he's not a gossip guy. Yeah. He's no, no, really, no, 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 TMZ at this point like does break all this stuff. That's true. Yeah, they start right. off as like the gossip at this point. Well, they, they they break like the players who are beating women. Sure, I mean not, not a good thing, but they right. have the news before anybody knows about it. God, I hope it's not true though. Adam, Steelers and Antonio Brown's agent Drew Rosenhaus scheduled to meet Friday in Jacksonville to discuss a reworked and improved contract. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's specifically talking about the Jaguars. You think so? Absolutely. 
Hundred percent. I mean, why else would they be coming here? No, I mean, there's literally no. They wouldn't mention Jacksonville. Is this is this the restructuring contract hub of the United States, Jacksonville? I didn't know that. It's one thing we do so well. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's awfully interesting. There's no way unless they're not signing Foles. There's well, of course no not. way. If we're signing Avery, we're not signing Foles. Are they gonna? Are they? Are they moving up to get like a Haskins? And are they trading for Rosen and bringing in Brown? Like, whew, I don't know. I don't know. We're, that's exciting, like kind of, because it's interesting. But would you want him on the team? I, I'll, I'm an outright no, a thousand percent. Look, see, no. I'm at no a definite no. I'm like, at no, no until you tell me that they're coming to Jacksonville, and then I'm like, wait, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now that I no, I don't want him. Oh, you were saying there's a chance? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, exactly. Let's say that because I kind of like it. Yeah, exactly. Let's say this. We're exactly. not getting falls. <laughs> Ab's on our team today. Oh yeah, in a heartbeat. Wait a second, we're not getting foals. He's and asking if we don't get foals, would you take AB? Oh well, that's not going to happen. I don't think, right? I mean, why would they get AB and not? So why have is he Foles? coming? He's not going to renegotiate for like seven million. I mean, and maybe they're trying to drum up interest, just like uh, Foles' agent. Oh. Yeah, I just. I mean, this is the last place I would see him. I, I mean, yeah. Why, it, why, why would what would Coughlin want with Antonio Brown? Imagine that guy yeah. in our locker room. Muscle. I mean, bring, to me, I just don't think Fowler it's happening. I think for some odd reason, they're they're doing this in Jacksonville. Maybe someone in this circle lives here, or whatever. I don't know. Um, Maybe the I think it's coincidence. The Hooters at the landing. Maybe so. Landing. <laughs> rest in peace. I think that it has absolutely nothing to do with him being on the Jaguars. There's no way possible. Yeah, I, I just why, don't. Why, see why it. would they mention Jacksonville? They wouldn't mention Jacksonville nothing with the Jaguars. No. Or in between Miami and Atlanta. Maybe it's a stop know. over to Disney? Or maybe here for the players? No, y'all are... What are y'all talking about? I mean, listen to yourselves right now. <laughs> Jack- you're, you're saying Adam Tom Coughlin's going to bring Antonio Brown. That's crazier. <laughs> Adam Schefter said Jacksonville. In what dimension is Jacksonville mentioned with not the Jaguars? Okay, well, great. So he is coming here to renegotiate a contract with the Jaguars. It happens. I would be... Maybe so maybe the Masked that. Singer tour is coming through, <laughs> and Antonio Brown's got to you know. Are they appear. filming next season of Dancing with the Stars yeah. here, and they're bringing back all the? I mean, dude, no, I would not want him on the team. I don't know. Suddenly you get Nick Foles, and you get Antonio Brown, and you have Leonard Fournette. That's uh, a rather choice. I mean, what? I don't know where this money's coming from. I mean, it's not our problem. It's not. Even, it's not our money. Yeah, it's not our money. <laughs> Well, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Next Wednesday, a week from today, is the official start of the new NFL year. So a lot of questions that we have will be answered in a week's time. And actually, even before that, because illegal tampering starts a couple days before then, so that's usually when all the news breaks. I mean, it is. That's, I mean, you can, they announce stuff. You said legal tampering. Le- legal. Oh, I said illegal. I'm no, sorry. legal tampering. Illegal. Illegal started way longer. That's, that's, that's why we're talking about folds right now. When did that now. stop? <laughs> That's it. All right. That's going to wrap it up for episode 58. Put a lot into this one, and uh, it'll be a lot more next week. So, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Another Jags Pod, Facebook, and Instagram at Another Jags Podcast. As always, go Jags.